So we're going to do, um, so you can do CMEs a whole bunch of. Oh, nice. Thank you so much. All right. So real quick, um, does everyone know what a CMA is? Let me start there. Yeah, yeah. So a CMA is an acronym for a comparative market analysis. Two things about that is number one, we do not do appraisals for clients. We do comparative market analysis reports because we are legally not able to uh, do an appraisal. So that's a broker thing that Rosalie, I'm sure is very happy that I mentioned. Um, and the other thing I learned many, many years ago when you're speaking to a buyer or a seller, always a comparative market analysis. Uh, do not say CMA because most buyers and sellers have no clue what the hell you're talking about when you say CMA. So CMA is a comparative market analysis uh, and there's many, many different ways to do it. So I recently came across, and I we, we've had this for many, many years. I think NAR uh, created this technology called RPR. And the reason they created it was to combat the inaccurate Zestimates uh, that Zillow was putting out. And I think they invested, I think it was $30 million in building out the technology. And so we have this $30 million technology at the finger at our fingertips. And most of us still do it the old-fashioned way, which is going into Paragon, running, you know, sold under contract. And what I've recently been training myself to do is use RPR to give a far more accurate a detailed analysis for my clients and for myself, because I also do buy and flip homes. So I use this in my daily activities of bidding on houses. Well, so the RPR, you also have to uh, know the property because you have to put specifics in so you can get a good Correct. Uh, parable. So before I even begin, I'm gonna just ask for your guys' patience with me, knowing that this is a little bit newer. Um, and then maybe Rosalie will do a presentation on how to do a CMA using Paragon. So you could have both options. Because again, RPR is going to be a little bit more technical. The other cool thing I found out last night is that RPR actually has an iPhone and um, not Android. It, it may have an Android app, but my tablet, my whatever that's called, an app or a tablet, um, on my age right now, uh, has an app. So you literally hit the app in front of a house. Yeah, It'll know. recognize through it. GPS property and then you just start pulling pumps right then and there. So it's super, super cool. Yeah, so Has no, no affiliation yeah. at all with Kelly. Like if you go on the Kelly Williams app, you can do the same. You can just find I don't even do for that. sale in that. I just put them on. Do so let's stay on topic with RPR <laughs> and uh, we'll stay focused. So what I've done is you could access RPR through Paragon, but what I've done is the website I've saved to my favorites on my browser, so it's super easy to get to, uh, and we are going to uh, play around with this together and see how to do an RPR. Um, so where, where are you at? I'm sorry. Uh, for sale, for sale, absolutely. So here, like Rosalie mentioned, in order to do the CMA with RPR, you have to have an address. Um, so I'm going to go to 517 North Somerset. And yet nine times out of 10, it will auto populate. If it does, don't keep filling out the address go to the one where it auto populates. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we're going to hit search. All right. So that is step one. So this is the listing I put up. That's because this is what we do with Ron. Information is here until I put my listing. It was only old, you know, the yes. one picture on the front of the house. Yes. Oh, the class. Nine. 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 All those pictures up to the class. Nine. 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 
command shutdown. Fantastic. Really Fantastic. So now I do believe my next step is going to be build a comp analysis for this property. And I believe what it's going to do, it's going to prompt me to verify some facts. So the first thing we're going to do, now you see where it says sales comparison analysis or so go comparative like, analysis. So when you click uh, on sales comparative comparison analysis, it is a far more detailed report. Yeah, I mean, it is literally almost an appraisal. And when you click it, it will ask for your what state you're licensed in and for your license number because it basically is an appraisal. We're not going to do that. We're going to go to comparative analysis. Okay. And let me first. And maybe there is a disclaimer to saying that this is not an appraisal. It's only more. You're good. Yeah. So I, I don't know. If, and I'm thinking like with the sales comparison analysis, it might even have that somewhere. So it does. It does. I, and I don't, I don't think it does say it is an appraisal, but I will tell you it is very, very detailed. It probably is as accurate as an appraisal. Uh, maybe perhaps more. So first we confirm facts. So this is really super cool guys because since you already have this on the market, there's another category and public records, listing data, and then you make your changes here. So if you see anything on the left-hand side that is inaccurate, you will update it here. So here I'm gonna say, I'm gonna confirm it's a single family residence. There was none of that. There was no bedrooms or anything. In, pu in public records. And we're not here. Excellent. So let's pretend this listing data part, because this is an active listing, did not exist. And we were just looking at the public records data. And what I would do here, because I've walked through the property, I'm going to hit four bedrooms, mm -hmm. one full bathroom, um, square footage. Now, Right here, you see public records has it at 1390, right? The square footage of the house. Which is the square footage of the house. The listing data says 5502. That's the, that's the square footage of the lot. That's wrong. That's in, inaccurate. So you have, so there's an error here. So I'm going to reconfirm that the accurate square footage of the home is 1390. And the lot size that's here, accurate. if you see on the left hand side, is accurate. Uh, but let's pretend it wasn't. We're going to do 5,502. 5, That's the square footage of the lot. Right. Not often that we put lot square footage in, but this happens to be an island property. And uh, it's very common to put square footage for an island property lot because lots are very small. Um, so you're going to want to make that correction in MLS immediately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, lot dimensions. Uh, you have already put the lot dimensions in, so that's good. Is there a basement? No. No basement, uh, no garage, correct? No. Uh, year built, 1974. So everything else appears to be accurate here. And then I'm going to hit confirm facts and close. So what's important to understand here, you make those changes versus public records to make sure you get a more accurate comparative market analysis. Mm -hmm. I hit confirm facts, and now I'm going to hit find comps right here. It's a blue button, find comps. Now, um, what I'm going to do here, I wish I could get this. Hopefully, can I can minimize it. Yep. Yeah. Okay, move this over. Down. All right, cool. So, I was always taught when doing a CMA to include three actives for sale, three pendings, and three sold. I have been recently not including actives for sale just because things are just going on the market and selling for so much money right now. It, it's not even accurate. I mean, pen, pendings are probably the most accurate right now. And it's right so now. hard to even find actives um, at this point, too. So, but... You know, for kicks and gig, well, I'm going to take off actives for today. And then single family residence. So it's saying property type, property status. So pending and sold. And again, thank you for your patience, everyone, because this is still a little bit now. Um, time range or time frame within the last week, within the last month, within the last three months, within the last six months, within the last 12, within the last 18. I'm going to go within the last six. Okay. Um, 
bedrooms. I'm going to do. Can I, can I interrupt? Yeah, please. 100%. So if, if you're having trouble finding comps uh, within that six month period, you can go to 12. You can't go anything past 12. Okay. Because okay? most appraisers will not do anything past 12 months. Okay. And then you would have to also let them know that, you know, because of lack of comps, you had to go past uh, the six months. And at that point, I mean, if you went past 12 months, Dan, don't you agree you would have to um, adjust for the increase in sales at that point? Yes. Like 12 months, yeah, because six months ago, mm -hmm. it probably wasn't as crazy as it has been in the last two. I mean, right now, it's just such a unique time in the market that comps that are past four months are, mm -hmm. are pretty much old at this point. Because yeah. what something sold for in February and March, the market's already jumped up from there <laughs> at least 12 to 15. Percent. So they are, is that so right now there are a lot of under appraisals taking place. I've had two or three already. So it's because the appraisers can't even keep up with the market or there, there are not enough solds to keep up with what is existing. So that's been a fun challenge that we've all been dealing with. Um, so, but right now, Three to five months, I would say, is the most you want to go back. But just for today, we're going to go back to, to now. Bathrooms. I'm going to do a minimum here of how many bathrooms are? It's a, it's a three one. Four one. It's a four one. It's a four one. So here I'm going to do bedrooms. I'm going to cap it out at four, and baths. I'm going to just keep it at one, and then square footage. I'm going to go from one thousand. Um, how many square feet is the home? Thirteen ninety. Thirteen ninety. I'll I'll go from. A thousand thirteen ninety, I'll say to seventeen hundred. So uh, we'll do eighteen hundred square feet. Lot size. I'm just gonna zero this out. Fine. If if this was acreage in Egg Harbor Township, I would care, but these are all posted stamp lots, and I don't want this to eliminate any comps that I might find. Well, the thing is, is that on that same block, mm -hmm. there are a few that are very small mm. and um, we called Emily Marchese and Margate and apparently these lots have been grandfathered in. Good. So it's a double lot. So it, it well it's not considered a double lot because it's not considered a double lot because um that's the average size lot on that block. Mm. But the ones that are that look like half the size that are on that same block because I've seen the houses Apparently, those were grandfathered in. But it, depending on how much of a difference, if it's if it's a small amount, it's, it's not like it's like half. It, so what more? what I'm doing, guys, if you're noticing, I'm taking out details here because the more details I put into this analysis, usually the less homes. Now let's pretend when I hit search, dozens, if not more than dozens comes up. I'm going to refine this search. But for right now, I just want to see what comes up based on these parameters. Does everyone understand that? Or does anyone have a question about that? I did right now. I might tighten it up depending on how many comps I get. So if I get a ton of comps, then I'll start tightening up those ranges. But for now, I just want to see... All right, so I'm hitting search and let's see what comes up. I'm glad I did uh, what I did. What do you usually oh, you got, um, two active pending and sold? Generally speaking, I'll do three active, three pending, three sold. For today, I'm just doing pending and sold. And Dan, did you put in the year? Did you leave in the year? I did not. That took I took that out. I took that out because I want to see what this produces. Uh, based on a very, what I like about RPR, you're able to pull comps within a very tight geographic range to the subject property, where the MLS, it's harder to get homes that are really, really close. So in the last six months, with the parameters that we set, we only have two sold comparable. Three one that sold in 1952 or three one that sold in 1930, one sold for 170, one sold for 230. So what I'm going to try to do is I want to hit modify search. And like Rosalie said, we were talking about if we run into a challenge, not having enough comparables, 
we've got to make some adjustments. So now I'm going to go, I'm going to say, I want to go back, I'm going to go back 12 months. I'm going to go back 12 months because I want to try to find more comparable sales to justify the price. Because here's the one thing I could absolutely promise you. This RPR system, the multiple listing ser service that we all use is the same exact technology that an appraiser uses. So unless you get a cash buyer for your listing, this is the holy grail because you could list something for 350 and it sells at 350 right now, unless you catch a cash buyer, it's not appraising. So you're wasting a whole bunch of everyone's time. So now I'm going to go back to 12 months. Excuse me, Dan. When yeah. You the two sold properties that you came up with were sold when? Uh, within the last six months. So from oh, okay. today, from today, going back six months, right now, based on three bedrooms, with a maximum of four and just one bathroom, we only have two in the last six months. So now I'm gonna say, okay, I wanna go back 12. So I'm really pushing the envelope here. Now you have six. Now here's, here's what's interesting. All right, here we go. So we've got recently sold, which is in green, and then we have sold, but they were a little bit further back. Now I'm just looking right here. The good news is in this year of 2020, I've got one, two, three, four, five. So now I've got enough comps to work with. Now I'm gonna compare and contrast to build out my comp list. Now the subject property again is a three bedroom of the four. Okay, so we got a four here. So I'm gonna add this to my comp list where I have a 215 sold price built in 1966. Very, very close to the subject property. Is this a ranch or a two-story? Okay. And Central in there, you know, shade, no garage. Perfect, perfect. Now, what I can do, let me take this off real quick. Let me show you guys something. If I want to look into the property a little bit deeper. I can click on the link. I can literally see the pictures and see if I want to add this to my comp list. So I've got a ranch, uh, engineered floors, nice gray paint. Uh, this is on Balfour, original kitchen, little laundry room, baseboard, electric heat, updated appliances. Uh, now I have to make a determination, you know, how close is this? to my subject property and if I'm going to include it in my analysis. Um, and the answer is, is do you believe that's close to your property? It actually, hers is the most basic house I think on the book. Okay. It's very basic. Now, uh, just two quick questions. Is it around 1300 square feet, your it's subject property? Yes. And when was it built? 74. So this is within a very tight, very close in age. Okay. Um, so I'm going to include this in my comp list. Okay. Um, and there's a once you get them all in that side column, yeah, and you can compare better or worse. Yeah, you, you can really get technical with this. Yeah, that's what I did for this guy. Fantastic. Uh, we've got one here that sold for 272. It's a 3 1 built in 1950. Um, you said yours is very basic. I'm gonna very basic. open this up real quick. Maybe we get lucky with some interior pictures. Oh, yeah, we do. All right, cool. So here we've got some interior photos so we could see, you know, what this looks like. So this is, this is beautiful. Yeah, redone, gorgeous kitchen, super, super nice. So I may decide that this is a comp I don't want to use in my analysis because it appears to be completely, completely redone. This is kind of a split level with two car garage underneath. So it's a raised rancher. Is yours raised by chance or no? Okay, great. Uh, this one on Suffolk built in 1952, three bed, one bath, 1100 square feet. Probably something we want to add to the, the comp list. I, Just, I saw that one here. Yeah. And uh, take a quick look here. This is just one photo. Does yours have one car garage? Okay, fantastic. Um, I'm gonna add this to the comp list. This is a two story. So I have to at least come up with three here. Right. Now, the one thing you'll also notice guys, uh, no under contracts, no under contracts. These are all sold. So there's nothing actively under contract within the range that we use. 
Uh, I'm going to pull out one more comp here. I guess I will use that one that's really, really nice. Yeah. Um, no, and then extend that to maybe include two backwards. You know, that's more of a good. You, def you definitely could. You definitely could. Um, I, I did, I did, you know, yeah. in my comp analysis, and I think I got 13 properties. You you will definitely get more by using a two bet. There is a significant difference between a three bed one bath and a three bed two bath. Absolutely. Three bed one baths are what they call functionally efficient. Three bed two bath is functionally efficient. So I'm going to stick with three ones uh, because the the literally I would say the price. So if I was looking at a Three bed, one bath ranch, 1300 square feet versus a three bed, two bath, same square footage. I would apply as much as $25,000 in value just for having that second. Literally, that's that's the price difference I see for a three one versus a three two, which is why a lot of people will always figure out when they buy a house to rehab, where do I put that second full bathroom? Very, very common. So I'm going to just hit update valuation and close. It looks like it's kind of given a revision on the price, 267. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to hit create report. And then you could select what type of report. I'm not going to go into each individual one, but I think seller's report is the one most commonly used. And you could literally email it directly to the seller. Right. And then I could hit run report. It says display now. You can open a PDF. Yeah, what is what is your email? It's T C E C O H E N O H E N one five seven seven one five seven seven at gmail dot com. Okay, I'm sending this to Teresa, and I'm also going to hit. Uh, I wonder if I can hit display now too. Yeah. Oh. You know, oh, it looks like one or the other. I think it might. It'll, 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 um, it'll, you'll, you'll hear like a ding dong, like a doorbell. When it's ready. You will. So it's five minutes. Uh, I want to share this with you once it's done. So, really accurate report. Um, and then I'm going to send this to you as well. C O H E N T C O H E N. T C H O O H E N Cohen. C O H E N. Like last fact, last fact, you're a student. 1577. A two bedroom for signing? Yeah. All right. When you start doing that stuff, you really need to know what it would cost to add another bedroom to your house. So you need to, like, you, and, that, and that, that does come with experience. Yeah. I like he's saying, like, what happens if you went to a two bedroom? Because if you couldn't find any, any, if there was like limited threes, go two to four, and then add, yeah, absolutely, uh, you're 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 stretching out the parameters. Uh, I would also go to say when you're comparing a three bedroom or a four bedroom house to a be two bedroom home, the disparity in price is massive, is twenty five to thirty thousand dollars depending on, you know, that's why you see, for example, a lot of garage conversions where they'll take a garage and they'll turn it into a three bedroom if it's a two or a three to a four um, is most buyers, most buyers you either here, I want a four bed, two and a half bath or a four, two, or I want a three bed, two bath. I've got this gorgeous rancher in Epsic and I mean, it's beautiful dialed in. I priced it aggressively. It's a two bedroom home. I can't get it. So is I'm it literally going to probably have to drop it 25,000 under house next door with a second bathroom that sold within a week. It's a it's a two, I think it's a two, two and a half or a two, two, and I cannot sell because it's a two bedroom. So my point is having that second full bathroom or having that third or fourth bedroom is a big deal and you got to price it accordingly, um, which is probably what Teresa is having us do right now is that she's struggling with either selling it or they think it's worth more or whatever the case may be. The son told me, I, I, I put the listing in last yeah. night with the woman. Yeah, what did you list it for? 239. I, I don't think you're too far off, but the property is probably, if it's an original status and it's a 3-1, we'll see what the report comes up with yeah. when it pops up. Um, it's probably worth about 215, 215 to 219. 
Um, then he's thinking that we can. I heard a doorbell. I heard a doorbell. I'm going to click report. And up here, you'll see, guys, when the doorbell rings, you can click here. And this is mine. It's my house. I tried to do it just before I came. So it looks like something's still going well, on. That one, well, because you, you clicked it twice to generate. Hold on. So that's why there's two on there. Yeah, One's gone. On. All right. Okay. Done. That one. Oh, no, oh, still being generated. Yeah. Um, what I so you guys, I, I always like to give nuggets. So I'm going to give you guys a nugget about CMAs, which I do personally. So number one, oh, download report. What I like to do with a CMA, or yeah, CMA comparative market analysis. I like to send the CMA to the seller before I go to the property. So that's my nugget for you guys today. And you might think I'm crazy. Um, so here's the comp analysis, by the way. So it's saying a suggested list price of, oh no, this is your list price of 239. Yeah. Uh, it says the range is between 172 and 357, which is awful. Um, but let me just go through this. You, you, you want how many miles? One mile? Uh, it automatically pulls it within one mile, typically. Uh, but she has a unique property. Her property is in Ventnor Heights, right. which is a very, very unique market. And it's different than Ventnor. It's not on the island itself. Um, so anyway, this is, I, I don't know why it has all these ages. Yeah, I, I'm not quite. Yeah. You don't want to send them 17 and 18 pages of each home. Yes, so correct, correct. So re re real quick, over here in these reports, there are far more simplified CMAs. So I would recommend you go through each one of these to find out which one is what you're looking to send to a client. There's a mini property report, valuation workbook, market activity report. Seller's report is a pretty detailed report, but uh, just real, let me see if I could pull up. If you go to the seller's report, you go to more details, you can uh -huh. deselect certain sections. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so getting back to what I was saying to you before, um, I send these to the seller before I go out on the listing to allow them to get all their emotional frustration out <laughs> in advance before I get there. Now, Again, some people might be a little bit nervous about doing that. I would make it a very general report with a very large price range. Um, but again, it gives them a general sense as to what they might be looking forward to when you get out to their house. Um, this is one I did on my house here. This is this is this is pretty extensive. This is pretty extensive. Why, why it's pulling up a lot more comps, uh, I don't know. But play around with it. It is a very accurate uh, report for sure. And um, again, I send these out to the sellers before I even get there. And I recommend to them that they review it real quick before I get out. So we're not stepping into, if, if a house, let's say, for example, I'll just use my house as an example. Let's say I think the house, my house is worth $325,000. And I think as the listing agent, it's worth 275. Well, if they hear 275 while I'm sitting at their kitchen table, they are probably not gonna be too pleased with me and they're gonna kick me out of the house pretty quickly. I like to give that initial blow before I get out there. So they have time to digest it. They have time to talk amongst themselves. And if they're you know, disappointed, their disappointment's coming out while I'm not physically there. Um, <laughs> Whether you agree with it or not, I don't know, but I've been doing it for years and it's worked very effectively. So the more information you could send out prior to the appointment, uh, the better off you're gonna be. The other thing I'd recommend too, prior to a listing appointment, uh, send out your bio and send out your resume. How many homes you've sold in the neighborhood, uh, your accolades, things of that, that nature, uh, where you're gonna market the property. Uh, we call it a pre-listing package and it will set you up for success. Uh, highly, highly recommend that. So CMA along with 
a pre-listing package uh, talking about yourself or your company will help set that appointment up uh, and make you stand out from the rest of the professionals. Because to be frank with you, most agents will not do that. Um, and again, play around with this, guys. This is a great, great tool and technology. Um, and I think that is all I have for you guys today. Uh, Rose, is there anything that you want to add? Now, you could also, listen, you could go into Paragon and do this through Paragon. Right. Uh, you know. Which takes longer. And I, and I would recommend that, actually, as for new agents, because you also then know the market, you're, for, especially for that area. Um, you know, so you, you just go on to Paragon and you just um, pull up three comps, three sold. Yes, I'll show you. You want to jump in yeah. to Paragon? You want to keep using this as the, the property? Just uh, to, yeah, that's just fine. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Hey, may I have that little map back? Thanks. The map? No, no, the map. Did I hand you it like Yeah, you did. Oh, here it is. Oh, I'm sorry about that. What would you put on a few of these? So, um, your company system, uh, your statistics, if you have any, if you don't, I just use statistics. Um, list of sales credit ratio, average days on market. Uh, again, a CMA definitely. Sorry, a little bit about, again, I, I go in the paragon. Okay. Starting out, make it more about the company because you work for the company. So, make it about the company. So I, I would just I would go to search. I would go to residential. And and really, there's no right or wrong answer to how you do your market analysis. It's basically however it's easier for you, as long as you come up with um, some kind of value. What is this? This is a uh, Ventner. Yes, actually in the Heights, but they don't have that option. They do. They have a subdivision yeah. Ventner Heights. But I would not uh, use it uh, because yeah. a lot of agents will not use that as a subdivision when they're listing it and okay. it'll eliminate some lots of that. So that's another good nugget. When you're doing a CMA, um, oftentimes agents will list the Oops. subdivision, for example, but be very careful putting that in the MLS if you're doing a subdivision because very much of agents do not put the subdivision when they're listing it. And you'll lose yes. some potential mm -hmm. sales. I totally agree. Uh, so I would absolutely recommend that you probably don't put this. In. Yeah, I've never done it. So, so I do, I go and I put it as sold. I put uh, we'll go back six months. Um, and then you can also bring up the map. So if you go to advanced criteria and you see where it says search by, search by map, and you click on that. Okay, and it comes up with the whole whole map. So, I mean, and this is why, like I said, it does it does take a little while longer. So here's Vetner, um, Vetner. So it does bring up the Vetner area. Okay, so I kind of enlarge it, and this is Somerset. Yeah. So you kind of try to find Somerset again. You have to have patience. So there's Somerset right here. So I then go to radius. And I and I kind of bring it out to like I, I try to calculate for like at least one mile. Unfortunately, that's the only thing about this; it doesn't tell you how far you are. Okay. And then I click on search, and then twenty four uh, came up. Okay. But that's everything. That's everything exactly. So. And I don't know, and, and, and I, again, I want to say it comes with experience, and especially if you know the market, you can, you can and then you can agree with me if, if, or disagree with me, you can go into that neighborhood and you can kind of go in your mind what that house is going to sell for, just from the experience. Oh, yeah, and yeah. so that's, and that's basically what I do. And that's kind of what I, 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 I kind of say, okay, well, I know that area is getting this much. So I kind of, so I won't start it. I won't start looking at $531,000. So are you gonna actually do it? I CMA on that address right now. I do. So <laughs> um, I had a point. I had a point on that. Go ahead. It's so don't don't get frustrated with knowing what the value of a property is, like Rosie was saying. 
can walk up to a farmer and say, like this and work mm -hmm. this. It, that takes a long time. Yes, it does. So don't don't put that much pressure on yourself. Um, what I'd recommend to all of you, if you guys are not doing it, uh, this is for the brewery, you should be out every week mm -hmm. previewing properties that are on the market for sale, um, giving feedbacks through show and time, mm -hmm. and act, you know, familiarizing yourself with the market. The best way to learn the market is preview properties on the market. Highly recommend it. And make it part of your schedule. Time block a few hours every week to preview the property. Now, the other thing is when you go out and preview a property, uh, some of you are social media uh, fluid. I'm not. Do a video. Do a video of the property. Do Andrew, a Andrew do a preview. You know, I, I saw some guy who was on uh, television. He has a he does his weekly top ten. Got millions of followers, and he'll do his top ten list every week. The best buys in the neighborhood. What a great social media post that one. Yeah, that's a massive nugget. So now you're building a base of followers, you're building your social media presence, you're building your expertise, and you're learning about the market. So talk about killing two birds with one stone. It's a great, great thing to do. Well, mm -hmm. every time I've been in this city, I've always been this. And you never really do it. You went so fast. How about you lost me? Can you go? I, I'm not going to go back. We'll have to sit. We can sit down, for, you know, at, at another. Because I mean, I, like I said, it's um, we're, it's like yeah, yeah, and, uh, yeah. Um, and and I and I, I'm probably not going to finish this for you either, Teresa. Because again, I I this is the long way. So now I would literally go and open up every comp, okay, and okay. check and look into them. And if I think that that's a perfect match for the one that I'm uh, trying to value, I will do a check mark, and then I would just continue to eliminate until I get my three souls. And, yes, okay. Um, and then I'll then I do the same thing with listings, okay. And I have gone back to one year, and I have extended out past one mile, okay. Um, like for instance, I mean, I do a lot in Buna and Folsom. There is literally nothing on the market. I just had to do a market analysis for a Folsom property, and I had to go deep into Williamstown, which is Monroe Township, totally town, totally different township, county, whatever, in order to find comps. But it's also the back door of Folsom, okay. Um, going to Maze Landing to me would be the opposite. It would be the wrong direction for my area. Okay, so I had to literally go out 12 months and I had to go out probably five miles to find comps. And then you kind of, then, and then when you're doing your report, you kind of explain that to them, you know? And as long as the market is the same as the market uh, that your comp is in, I really, in my opinion, don't see that big of a difference. Um, I'll, I'm going to add something. So when you're just learning the business, and if you're insecure with the comps that you've come up with or with the CMA you've come up with, use other resources to, to almost like double check. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if I'm buying a property in an area I'm unfamiliar with and I run a comp analysis, don't get mad at me by saying this, but I will check out the Zest. And say, oh, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm not too far off from this estimate, or I'll look this at the estimate. assessed value. So I will use those as like, okay, let me just double check if my numbers mm -hmm. make sense. I, I agree so, with you. Um, I would recommend reaching out to maybe a local agent that is an expert. Don't give them the property address, of course, if you're going for a listing appointment, but just say, hey, listen, just out of curiosity, you know, what, what's the average sale price for a three bed, one bath in, um, in uh, Venter Heights? That's original, 1960s. Yeah. You know, eventually, and eventually, you will be able to just come right off the mm -hmm. top of your head. I think it's between two ten and two. Right? I kind of think that I, I think I did good with that though. But I think you're well within the market, mm -hmm. right? And and um, you think I'm a little above, and you might sun, be. You might be. The sun thinks I'm a little below. Yeah. Well, because they hope so most sellers always do. <laughs> so and he's trying to tell me to be strong in this thing. Until he until he gets the comps, now I have to go do everything through him, um, you know, because he's trying to tell me that the mother is a little diminished, even though, I mean, she's a little slow moving, moving, but I don't think she's diminished. And 
He doesn't have a power of attorney, but I'm going to roll with the family thing and do it, you know, the way that they want. But he wants them to withdraw the list. Do you think I need to pull it? Well, if they want to withdraw mm -hmm, the list, yeah, sure the, the son does. So I can, I should do that. And, and the, that process is what just as easy as just keeping the status. Or I do guess, I have to? I guess so you Don't get a full release. Oh, no, not a full release, just a, just a withdrawal. Mm -hmm. who, wants, who wants to get a couple of good CMA presentations? Okay. So when I present a, uh, a CNA to a seller physically, I use an analogy of going to a sporting event. So I always say there's three places to be at a sporting event. In the parking lot tailgating, in the stands watching, or on the field wall. Where would you like to be when you present an analogy? So and let them the answer. three places, the parking lot tailgating, Tailgating, roasting hot dogs. You could be in the stand drinking some beers, or you could be on the field, uh, ball field. Where would you like to be when you play normal? There's three places to be. Right? Great script. The other thing I do before I even present the CMA is I've gotten a, a preview of the house. I ask the person when I walk in who's going to give me the grand tour. Now, if it's a couple, married couple, Whoever raises their hand to give me the grand tour, who do you think I'm giving the presentation mm -hmm. to when I'm sitting at the club? Yeah. The person that gave me the tour. That means they're the decision. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so good nuggets there. And then before I give them the number I think we should be on the market for, I always say if we can agree on a price and on a commission, would there be anything that would prevent you from? I kind of did that on Sunday, Good. and then she was cool. Came back Monday with all papers and my sign. Good. Even had a little St. Joseph's. There you go. Him in the ground, you know what I mean? And everything was all good. And then yes, the next day, the son calls because he was left out of the loop. And he said, Oh, so he wasn't at the presentation? No. And oh, so all the decision makers were. Well, he's he was he's, his name's not on the beat. No, I understand. I know. So did you? Uh, so real quick, uh, I'm getting off the CMA topic, but I can't. I know, but I apologize. So too. when you went on the listing appointment, did you do a pre-qualification? Call ahead to pre-qualification. I've been I've been talking to her the entire month of October. Fantastic. So before I would have gone out, hey, it's Teresa coming. I'm just confirming four o'clock today. And just real quick, you know, you mind if I ask you just a few quick questions just so I can do the best job possible. I'm not going to go through it right now. However, the last and final question I ask in the pre call script, if you feel 100% comfortable and confident with me when I come out, would there be anything at all that would prevent you from moving forward with me when I come out that night? What she may have told you is my son needs to be present during there. Now, this yes. is for a learning experience, right? So we're not going to use yours as the exact example. Many times it's say, yeah, you know what? I would not be able to sign the paperwork because my son who lives in Ohio would need to hear the presentation. Great. So would your son be available at four o'clock to be on the telephone or a Zoom call when I come out? No? When would be a good time to do it? Thank you so much. Thank Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Welcome. You're welcome. So okay, I'm so sorry, I'm gonna dismiss myself. You did it. That's okay. fine because like I said I'm not gonna go. I mean, God, I would be here all day if I had to just go. So then I just kind of open up. The, like I'll, I'll try to. Like you said, this was a rancher, yes. so I'll try and. But so now you look and see if, if this is if this is too uh, too updated or in better shape. That's about that's about that's about similar for sure as far as. Similar, okay. Very similar, yes. And then I would go try to find the next rancher, or some something within that price range, um, and and square footage too. I also look in the square footage. So this is probably big in square feet. Most buy levels are three one and a half. Thirteen ninety square. Feet. How much is the how much is the square footage of the thirteen ninety of the house? And this is thirteen forty one. So. Mm -hmm. How close do you want to be with square footage when it um, compared to bedrooms and? Oh, you want to be close to square foot. Yeah, you don't want to compare a twelve hundred 
square foot home to a 2000 square foot home. That's like, that's probably like another $40,000. And yeah. Yeah, it's all important. It's but and, and, and this is where, uh, see, we're not appraisers. So it's kind of difficult. But this is where an appraiser would make adjustments for, for the square footage for uh, bedroom count and stuff like that. Okay, and and normally, um, but they do it all the time, so it's just like well, yeah. Know. And I and I do I do a lot of BPOs and stuff like that, which are broker price opinions for banks. Uh -huh. So, so um, yeah. So what so what I do is from just from doing them for like over the last twenty something years, usually your square footage would be range from twenty to forty dollars. So if you have a square footage difference, you can kind of. Um, put that in there um, and then you can calculate or add, subtract, whatever you think the square footage is. Okay. I did not as, not as many as I used to. Oh my God, I used to do 10 a week now. You I, get like a, a one chunk of dough for each one. Right? Yeah, it's, it's not worth, they're not really worth. I mean, the, the, the banks have dropped significantly um, as far as their value. Like, that, I mean, one bank only wants to pay you like Thirty-eight dollars, so it's not worth your time. We 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 we're worth more more than that. Yeah, yeah, and they're not paying that. Uh, so now, see now this is so this is what's weird. So now this was a three-two, uh -huh. but it's only a thousand square feet. Yeah. Right. So um, I would still click on it, and and again, and then I would just start eliminating again. Again, my my version is so slow, but to me, this is how I learned the market. And this is how I learned how to, because um, they didn't have RPR and all that when I first started. You had to do, literally do it this way. So how did we start? How did you start this again? The first thing I did was what? Search. 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 Right. So we go to search. You hit residential. Okay. There you go, Sherry. Yeah, and then, out. and then you, you know, you put the township, which is uh, uh, Vetner right. sold. I, I'm, I went back six months. Okay, and then I want to advance okay. criteria. And where did the, where, where, where was the soul? The, um, um, the status. Right. So you go to status and you click on all sold, and then you do the closing date. Okay, and then you do you. Then I go to advance criteria, and then click on the little map. And it should bring you up to, to the area where you are uh, doing the market analysis. Um, and then you kind of look, uh, enlarge it and look for that street and then do a radius. You didn't do bedrooms and stuff? I do not do that, no. no. I do not. You... Well, see, and that's what I was just saying. It, I try not to go more than a mile, but unfortunately, when you do a radius, it's not telling you Search how, far you, how far out you went. Because I, for some reason, I don't know if it's a glitch in this, when you put one mile search right up here, right here, it, it doesn't give you one mile. It just, it just doesn't work oh, for some okay. reason. I don't know why. Uh, so okay. that's why I do the radius. So I'm not getting that big old circle. Like, you have, did you, you, did, you, did you go to radius? Um, All right, let me, I have to get, I have to get out of it. Well, it does it say draw. Well, yeah, because if you click on draw, I'm sorry. And then you'll see radius. Yes. Okay. And then you click on it. I have you, whatever. I mean, listen, however you do like it, there is no right or wrong way to do a CMA as long as the outcome is the value of that property that you're doing the CMA okay, so on. That's okay. A little circle, right? And then you just enlarge it. Oh. Right. Do you, um, and then you hit search. Do you divide the price by the square footage to get a price per square foot? Um, and then like use that as in like as a factor. How many did you get? You came up. You only had. Eight. I came up with eighteen. That my radius must be smaller. Yeah, because mine is like yeah. huge. Yeah, radius is just in Ventnor Heights. Yeah, just in Ventnor Heights. Yeah, you can just see where Ventnor Heights is. You want to just kind of keep the radius in there. So I want to go back to the map search. Yeah, I want to, I want to do the radius again, right? Just where that little like twelve is, like it's really. But 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 um, oh, the word was draw, then radius, and then I changed that. So you might have to you might have to uh delete. See where it says edit, get rid of that. Did you already do a radius? I did. So get rid of the radius that you just did. It would be go back to radius. 
and radius is under draw. Oh, no, you didn't do it as well. So hit radius. And then click it. See, that's why you have to enlarge the map. Okay. Or maybe. Yeah, maybe here. Mm -hmm. Oops, that's mm -hmm. So, yeah, so you would kind of find Somerset where you are, and then you, uh, you can start the radius from there. Okay. okay. But try to stay in the Vetter Heights area. Right. And then, okay, and then again, and then that's, and I just start clicking on the comps to um, kind of get an idea of. Where where the um, value is? And I tr I'm trying to. Oops. Can you put any price in, or do you just leave it? No, I don't. I don't. I, I you know like I said, Dan puts it in one. Two, I don't do any of that. Okay. I really don't. Um. Recommend doing the same both ways. To try to. Yeah, that would even be yeah. That would be even be perfect if you're on, if, especially if, listen, if you're doing it in a development or a condominium, there's no doubt about that. That CMA is, is so easy. But if you're doing an area where you're unsure of, I would absolutely do it that way. Do it, uh, do it as an RPR and see what that comes out to be. And if you're not, if you're not really liking the value, then do it, do it the, you know, my old, I call it the old fashioned way. Basically, that's how, that's what it is. Um, if you want to send them house, you don't want to send that home report. I am not from, I, I don't, you, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I know Simone was very big on uh, RPR. So now I got 24. So there's a few things you can do, and you can, one, you can remove pages from it, or the other yeah, I did. And if, right. if there's maybe there's a part of like one of the sections you don't want to delete all the content from, you can always take the, the PDF, uh, like um, um, divider where it's, it's like a program where you put a PDF that has 20 pages in there, and it will it will like it will take it, it will take it to it makes it individual pages that you can then send right. yeah independently. That's a little more the but but you, you you can definitely do that. I've done that. To, like, I like. Pages on this, but yeah, on this, but I didn't want to have three and four. Teresa, is your house very dated? Yes, it's dated. Mm -hmm. It you know looks like the original kitchen, original bathroom. Okay. Sure. So, I, I see now. I would now again. So I would now say I don't like these comps. So now I would go back to my criteria, and I would go back one year. Mm -hmm. Or eight or or um, or nine months, you know what I'm saying? Um, and then I would kind of do it all over again. Again, I, it takes me a while to do a market analysis. So, but I am very uh, my properties sell pretty much for what they're on the market for, or a little less, depending on the market at that time. Okay. Um, and and uh, the other um, oh my god, I had another I had another fault to tell you, and I totally forgot. Well, they forgot what it was. What I was going to say. What's the Rosalie nugget for us all the way? The Rosalie what? The Rosalie nugget. We got to the umbrella nugget. What's your what's your nugget? I I like doing my nugget is I like doing it this way. I do. I I feel like I get a more of an accurate and you know the neighborhood because when you do the RPR, everything's going to come up. Um within that six month price range. But what happens if something did sell for? a year ago your neighbor's going to know that now you're going to say they're going to come to you so oh well sell it. this property sold for this much you have no idea what they're talking about because you didn't even see it in the mls my nugget is especially for new agents you need to know the market and doing a cma the long way the old-fashioned way whatever you want to call it you're going to know that market you're going to know that neighborhood because going through every comp you're going to see every property that pretty much sold within that last six months to a year. That's my nugget. Gotcha. So, Appreciate it. Okay. 
and I, and I and I'm here. Like I've had agents, uh, even you know, they'll they'll uh, look up comps and they'll look at them, and I I can briefly look. You know, if I have a time, I'll go through the comp that they picked and I'll look on the MLS real quick to say, oh, we know you're right on, right on, you know, right on uh, the value.